home crowd is in favor for Brian Robuto. A favorite here amongst the Cornell crowd. And there's the Giant Slayer. Call him what you want. He is a bad man, Gabe. Got confirmation we are starting at 125, so no draw. Or maybe there was a draw and they just happened to draw 125. We may never know. And this home crowd loves their big red. Cornell is 41 in 6 in home duels since 2009 2010 season. But this will be a tough match for the Big Red as Ohio State is the only team in the country with three ranked number one wrestlers by Interval. And Ohio State won the toss and will take the odd bouts electing for first choice during the odd bouts. And now, here we go, starting off, Noah Boffman versus Jose Rodriguez. Noah Boffman! Rodriguez very physical with the hands. Getting a nice front headlock going off to the single. Diving down and bringing him to his side. Boffman goes for the leg roll. Staying tough here, high hips win in this situation. Rodriguez has got a nice hold of Boffman's leg, trying to pressure into him. Boffman doing a good job in keeping and elevating that leg. Tough situation if you're in Boffman. And potentially dangerous, our referee calls it. Looking out for the safety of our wrestlers. Back to the center we go. Boffman only a freshman from Ohio for the Cornell Big Red. Has accumulated over 30 matches, which is an unheard of amount in Division I wrestling. I know unbelievable amount of strain that takes on your body looking to see if he can cause some action and Rodriguez doing a nice job keeping that front headlock and trying to get the angle Boffman fighting tough but that is a very exhausting exhausting position to be in and Boffman seems to got to get his offense off not able to get any real attacks as he's fighting that front headlock of Rodriguez Boffman seems like he's trying to pull that collar tie off into a Russian and he gets it. But no head position. See if he can capitalize from this position. Rodriguez doing a good job of fighting lifts, keeping his distance, and he breaks the Russian tie. And this Cornell Big Red mat is massive, let me tell you. I don't know if you can tell it from the video feed, but they do not have any real chance of going out of bounds. They're going to have to work. And I think Rob Cole, head coach of Cornell, did that specifically. He wants more wrestling happening in the center. As Rodriguez gets a nice left-handed underhook. Fake snaps into a front headlock. Goes to the other side for the single leg. Bogman stays in front of him. Another snap from Rodriguez. And he's probably going to see if he'll pick that ankle. Bogman doing a good job getting his weight back. Fighting hands. Again, that's a very exhausting position right there on the neck and lower back. Rodriguez still had that underhook. Bogman is able to circle out, circle out of it. Bogman doing a good job of defending himself, staying in his stance, but no real offense. This is not good if you're Bogman. He's gonna have to stay away from that edge of the mat. Doesn't want, a, does not want a stalling call only in the first period. And now the clock is at 30 seconds left. But let's see if we'll see any action right now. Little half shot, followed up by Boffman. Nice angle right there, but wasn't able to capitalize on it. That's a that's a situation that you don't get many times, and you got to capitalize on it. Mentioned before, Boffman had a as the time expires. Boffman had a lot of matches this year. Record show: 21 and 12 is Boffman's overall record. Just to put it in perspective, Jose Rodriguez only 12 and 7. So Boffman having a considerable amount of more matches. Both freshmen, you may think he is more has more time to acclimate, but you may also think 
That could do a lot of wear and tear on your body as we go down. Boffman chooses bottom. And this is a position that a lot of freshmen struggle in getting off on bottom as Rodriguez throws that leg in. And Boffman doing a good job hipping down, fighting hands. Let's see if he can capitalize from this position as he scoots his hip away. He wants to get out of that crab wide. Not give up the half and get sucked back for any cheap backs. Rodriguez staying tight to him like a koala. As he builds up. Off into his feet and a nice escape. And there's that Cornell home crowd and great cheering. 36 seconds on the ride time clock. So a great transition from Boffman, who's usually struggled in the bottom position against a, a 16th ranked Jose Rodriguez. That's a great showing, but again, was not able to get any attacks off on the feet. So I have to see what Noah Boffman is going to do here in the second period to threaten the match against Jose Rodriguez. Right in the center here. Hoffman going for that Russian tie consistently. And Rodriguez is pulling for that. And what amazing timing right there. Rodriguez consistently was pulling down on that front. Had like going for the shot. Hoffman was able to see it coming and timed it perfectly. And a great Matt return. And there's that Cornell big red crowd coming at you again. In overwhelming support for Noah Hoffman who does not only a great takedown but a great mat return and there's 23 seconds right here a ride would be huge here and another mat return and that is demoralizing if you are Jose Rodriguez and a great second period from Noah Boffman right now a ride out here would be huge as he's got that near wrist and he is riding forward that's a lot of pressure right there five seconds now on the clock as it ticks down three two one and what a great period for the freshman Noah Boffman going after Jose Rodriguez and now the choice goes to Ohio State and assistant coach Terry Valdiago says go, get, go down and get out ride time in six seconds in favor of Boffman big two mat returns a great slick takedown for Boffman made an amazing second period for him and now we see a false start caution on red you get two of them your third one's a point Two, two false starts are allowed. The third one is a point for the other opponent. Now, if you're Jose Rodriguez, you've got to get to your feet and get moving right away. You do not want to be on the mat for any time. Boffman's down to his feet. He's got to return. We don't want any stall calls here. He does not want any stall calls. A big lift. He goes for the attempt, doesn't get it. A roll as they go out of bounds, and Jose Rodriguez is going to be down again. And there's that home crowd again in favor. Cornell 41 and 6 in home duels since 2009, and it is showing true right now. It's a great start for 125 going into the third period. One minute and 39 seconds left on the clock. Kaufman shows tight waist ankle, switch sides. Rodriguez up to his feet, no problem. Let's see if we can that, see that, uh, that return again. He's bringing him down. He's got that ankle hooked. And again, ride time is at 45 seconds. Over a minute in favor of Bobman, and it will be a point. Ten more seconds, and he'll get the ride time point. There's a minute and 15 left in this period. And let me tell you, as a wrestler myself, get him ridden out, and now he's flat, and he's got his elbow on the ground. He is not in a good position. He's switching sides. No, Bobman set showing everyone I can ride too. I'm not just some little freshman. I'm out over here. Let's scrap. And there's the ride time clock up to a minute and 16. He's got an arm bar. He's looking for that far wrist. Let's see if he can get a turn. And if you're Jose Rodriguez, you've got to get moving. Get off. you got to get hand control. got to keep your elbows in and not give up those mat returns that have been very effective from Noah Boffman. And another great, great Breakdown, a chop flap. Cornell crowd is loving this. I'm loving it. You should be loving it. This is great wrestling right here. 20 seconds left on the clock. Riding time locked up, essentially 4-0 on Noah. And this match is looks like it's going to go to Noah Bachman. So the upset for the freshman of Cornell over number 16 break, Jose Rodriguez avenging his 10-2 major decision and we are just showing him how much this Cornell squad has grown and what a great way to start off this tour. A win 4-0 for Noah Hoffman of Cornell.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to apologize. I did not shave for this, so I know I want to look good. My mom always told me I had a face for radio, so I'm trying to do the best I can for everyone here. I look a little scruffy, a little, a little bit like a mountain man, but I'm bringing you some never-before-seen, never-heard-of commentary that you will never find on this side of the Mississippi as we start our match. Mark Gray versus Nathan Tomasello, the returning national champ against the seasoned veteran Mark Gray. Mark Gray trying to avenge his 8-3 loss to Tomasello at the Las Vegas Invitational. And after that match against Bothman, anything possible. That is a great win for Cornell. And man, Tomasello is just what you think of when you think of a Division I wrestler. Short and stocky. I don't have my contacts in. Maybe I can ask our cameraman next to me, Chaz Tucker. Can you find Nathan Tomasello's neck? Because I cannot locate it whatsoever. You cannot find his neck at all. Oh, and Thomas Howell with a quick single leg and a big lift. Mark Gray staying tough, and they go out of bounds. And that is great mad awareness on the side of Mark Gray right there. Thomas Howell had quick speed to get to the high ankle, and he wanted to sky him right away. Mike Gray kept, Mark Gray, sorry, kept that chin whip and stayed aware of where he was on the mat, was able to go out of bounds and avoid the takedown. And he's going to have to wrestle that hard for seven minutes straight if he's going to want to hang with the great Nathan Tomasello, returning national champ. Mark Gray trying to keep his distance. A little shot from the open from Tomasello. Mark Gray gets those double overs and is able to get out of it. And another lefty high crotch from Nathan Tomasello. Goes in the front headlock and out of bounds again they go. And good wrestling. And Tomasello is on Mark Gray like right on race. And that is an exhausting situation. Mark Gray seems to be shaking something off his head. Tomasello took a nice swipe at his face. And I can't really see what's wrong. Looked like may have been a nosebleed, but he shakes it off. He's a tough wrestler, those Grays are. Coached by older brother Mike Gray, who is a Cornell alum in the corner. And a nice little shot from Mark up to his feet. Tomasello quick with the, with the go behind. And that is perfect execution because with great speed and Tomasello going to let him up again. And a stall call for Mark Gray. The rule is if you do not make a conscious effort to go back inbounds, then it is a stall call. And swipes to the face from Nathan Tomasello. Really almost caddy out there pawing at the face of Mark Gray. And a nice little half shot from Tomasello. Man, he is just smacking the hell out of Mark Gray. And then there's that lefty high C again. Very hard to defend because it is very hard to execute. And Mark Gray not, does not look well. And that sign right there, the fist to the forehead that our official does. That is concussion protocol right there. Unlimited time for the trainer, Chris Scarlotta of Cornell, to evaluate Mark Gray to make sure he doesn't have a concussion. And I don't know if you're seeing the same match uh, I am, but I saw some heavy swipes to the face from Tomasello. Heavy hand fighting during that front headlock exchange that got him the initial takedown. And Mark Gray seems a little dazed and confused. Being evaluated by Chris Scarlato. If you'd like to keep up to date with everything going on, go ahead and give me a follow on Twitter. Got to get those follows right. I follow back at C. Lepressi24, also known as the Ivy League weatherman here reporting live. My name is Connor Lepressi. Yes, you got the warning because he wasn't pacing, correct? And then he went out and then he, stepped, and then he walked out of bounds. Official's here. I'll turn the mics to see if you can hear what they're saying. Discussing the stolen call against Mark Gray for not circling back in. And remember, unlimited time for concussion evaluation per the NCAA 
There is unlike injury time and blood time, unlimited. This part we like to thank our one of our loyal listeners, Yanni Diakmahalas, for listening to us. Yanni, we love you. We know you love us. Heal up strong. And Mark Gray immediately to his feet. And he's coming on. He wants to hand fight hard too. But man, Thomas Sello is quick. Oh, Mark Gray went for a little high flyer. High risk, high reward. You got to give kudos for the guy going for it. To be honest, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if I would have lasted that long out there myself. Nathan Tomasello looks like a mean man. There's a 100% chance he would steal my lunch money if we went to the same elementary school. Not a doubt in my mind. And time expires. And that's the first period. Tomasello leads 7-2 going into the second. And Choice goes to the Big Red. And Mark Gray, what could be mistaken as a swagger to his walk, is kind of stumbling. I don't know where his head's at right now. I hope he knows where he is. And another nice single leg from Tomasello as he runs the pipe and finishes again. And this once pumped up crowd after Noah Boffman's win is now silenced as Tomasello is slowly eroding what was Mark Gray. And Tomasello gets a nice tilt here against Mark Gray. And a stand up that's right in front of us. I can almost touch him. Break, out of bounds, four green. Four point here. Let's go down. And 13-3 is the score. Remember, if any opponent leads by 15 or more points at any point during the match, it is a technical fall in five team points. Hard ride from Tomasello, keeping Mark Gray flat, controlling both sides, driving forward. That knee pressure, and now he's got that right arm of Mark Gray working on it, trying to get the arm bar. Doing a good job. Growling his hips. Mark Gray trying to sit in. But that body of Nathan Tomasello is just unrelenting and unforgiving as he cuts Mark Gray heavy on that head. Lower back and neck are not going to be feeling well tomorrow if you're Mark Gray and there's that double leg transitioning to a single leg as he circles off to the side Mark Gray gives him the wizard but Tomasello slips it off and drives forward and another back points with that tilt of Tomasello and I believe that will be the tech fall in favor of Nathan Tomasello proving why he is the number one ranked wrestler in the nation and well deserved if you are Tomasello who is just putting together an unbelievable run this year and during this break we'd like to recognize our sponsor brought to you by Colin Gear I Smell Like Fun Thank you, Colin. Now we're 
Dylan Morrison, Tomasello would take my money in Geneva and then travel to Lansing and take my money again. Any more questions that you would like to ask me? At C-L-A-P-R-E-S-I-2-4 on Twitter. I will answer anything you have to ask. My favorite color is blue. My favorite number is 24. And as we start off, we have Will Cole versus number 12, Luke Pletcher. This is their first meeting. Will Cole trying to make his way into the rankings. And a nice little exchange. A single leg from Will Cole countered by another single leg of Pletcher. And then they both push off. Pletcher from Latrobe, PA, a product of Rob Waller's quote-unquote All-American camp. Pletcher will try to ring that motto true this season as he tries to bring some hardware back from the national tournament this March. Will Cole has a very diverse background in wrestling. A na uh, cadet national champ in Greco-Roman is not afraid to go upper body and a nice little high crotch attempt into a snap from Pletcher, but Will Cole says, I don't want none of that here in my house. I don't think that's what he actually said. Down on the mat, Will Cole trying to pull down on the head of Pletcher. And now he's in that Russian tie. See if he can capitalize on it. Pletcher did the signature leg kick and rip my arm out move which he learned at Rob Waller's All-American Camps. And here I'd like to take a moment to analyze what I think a lot of people overlook, and that is the choice of headgear and shoes of the wrestlers. Seems Will Cole is working the mat flexes there with the classic big red headgear. A safe but not very adventurous bet. Pletcher, on the other hand, looks like he stole his headgear from one of the youth wrestlers here from the clinic beforehand. What was he thinking? Nice little snap to a cross ankle pick, but wasn't able to pull the head down of Will Cole. They must not have taught him that at Rob Waller's All-American Camps. Nice little open shot. Responded right back from the shot from Pletcher. Both of the guys taking a lot of shots from the open, but no real penetration into the legs here. A lot of hand fighting with half shots. Another head, literally, not, not even a drop to the knee right there from Pletcher. Can't expect to really score a shot unless you fully commit Possibly they may have quote unquote commitment issues in terms of leg attacks. And there's the buzzer at what was a very exciting first period. Choice goes to Pletcher and he defers to Red. Williams says, I'm gonna go down. Nani Diakmahalis, not only have I hit the signature leg kick and arm out move, I have mastered it. It's actually trademarked. If I see you doing it, I will issue you a cease and desist. Luke Pletcher will be hearing from my lawyers after this match. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to tweet me at CLaPressi24 on the Twitter. If you do not know what that is, welcome to 2017. And Will Cole was broken flat, got to his base and crawled out of bounds. And this home crowd was trying to get some momentum back after it was all but lost from Nathan Tom Tomasello's tech fall over Mark Gray. And Will Cole, now with 37 seconds on the ride time, needs to get out. But Pletcher doing a good job of staying tight. And Will Cole hip heists out and pushes him away onto his feet. Riding time, 44 in favor of Pletcher. And now again, we saw this in the second period with Noah Boffman. This is when you can win matches. A takedown here and a ride out would be huge. Will Cole with the Russian. Pletcher pushing away with the opposite arm. Stalking him, trying to keep him on the edge. But Will Cole 
circling center. He has a freestyle and Greco-Roman background. He's very familiar with that tactic. Will Cole, not very faced on the heavy hands of Pletcher. And a high crotch half shot attempt. And if you're Will Cole, you gotta capitalize from those defensive shots. You just can't be content with defending them and not capitalizing. Oh, another snap, another snap. A single leg attempt. Oh, from Will Cole. Cross ankle attempt from Pletcher. None of these shots are really, in my honest opinion, honest attempts. And the first real shot taken by Luke Fletcher was with two seconds left. What was once speculation is now an undeniable fact. Both of these guys have commitment issues when it comes to taking shots. I'll call the spade a spade. Fletcher on bottom here. Will Cole loads on top. Riding time. Clicks down from 40. Will Cole, that was a leg into his feet. This is a tricky situation. You don't want to give up two with reversal. As Pletcher seems to look in, Will Cole stays down, and now the ref starts counting. If he doesn't work up in five seconds, that's going to be a stall warning. It looks like Will Cole's just going to take it. Stall warning against Will Cole. Now, do you try to ride him and possibly give up the other stall, or do you cut him and go for the takedown? Neither of the opponents have really shown any real capability of making a threatening leg attack so far this match. Luke Pletcher showed a moment of brilliance with two seconds left in the second period. But other than that, only half shots and heavy hand fighting. And now Luke Pletcher gets to his feet. And it's tied 1-1. Riding time is not a factor. Stall running against Will Cole. This match will be decided on the feet with a minute and 22 seconds left in the period. And Pletcher down with a low shot. Will Cole dives across. Trying to do some thump roll in here. Man, those knees are flexible as he goes across the other side. And misses it. Luke Pletcher tries to pressure in. Will Cole almost in a full split towards the edge of the mat. Matt awareness is key here as he has that overhook. Referee says, I see no control. Pletcher seems to have to control him in. Will Cole faces him. Pletcher pulls him all the way to the center. Get back here, he says. And a takedown for Pletcher. And we see a one count from the referee. And scratch that, ladies and gentlemen. That was not a one count, but a two count. So now, what would have been a 3-1 is now a 5-1 lead for Luke Pletcher. And Will Cole was doing everything he could to not give up the takedown. Gave up the takedown and backs. An escape from Will Cole. He's got 25 seconds left to make it happen. Let's see what he's got in store from us. What tricks does he have up his sleeve? Heavy hand fighting from Petcher as he knows Will Cole is dangerous from throws. Seven seconds left. Will Cole seems fatigued. He's giving it everything he's got. And this match is going to go in favor of Luke Fletcher of Ohio State. And that'll bring the team score as I count on my hands. Eight to three in favor of the Ohio State University. And now I'll look at my phone, which I can't live without, and see what amazing questions you guys have for me. Paul Williams, does the radio game help you get lots of ladies? Absolutely not. I'm actually giving up ladies for lunch. What's our next question? You guys are funny. Jonathan 
Oh, the bunny's coming out in the red unitard of the Cornell Big Red with the white C on the front and Cornell on the back. Unitard, a phrase brought to you by Peyton Talbot. Thank you for that. What is on the back of Ohio State Simlets? You know what? To be honest, Renee Holland, I don't have my contacts in, so I can't see anything right now. Um, but it looks like a bunch of shades of gray and shapes. And Jonathan Furness is good from that underhook position, and I say that because he's taken me down like three times with it. It's really frustrating. Single leg at top. Mike Jordan is ranked fifth in the nation. Jonathan Furness unranked. 149 is a new spot for him. Jordan Akeley telling me to talk less. You sound like my mom. And a nice little go behind from the free and Matt return from Micah Jordan and Jonathan Furness slowly tripods up to his feet fights hand control as they get towards the end of the bat up easy, up easy. and they go back to the center a minute and 43 left on the clock Michael Jordan doing a good job of covering all different areas of Jonathan Furness, grabbing ankles, putting his head right in the armpit, ripping arms, switching sides, threatening cradle, doubling across. But a great effort from Jonathan Furness as he gets to his feet. And now, 2 1, we'll see what he can do. A low shot attempt right to his feet from Michael Jordan. Again, great effort. Great display of effort from Michael Jordan. Going down low and then having the speed and strength to get height and finish the takedown against Jonathan Furness. Riding time is one second away from being at a minute. And Michael Jordan going for optional start now leads 4-2. And Jonathan Furness is going to have to get some of his attacks off as he can. And a nice lefty high C transition into a single leg and now brings his head to the center. And great transition wrestling from Michael Jordan. Lefty high C went single leg, cut across, and gets the takedown. Three different techniques, one takedown. Now he reaches back, tries to do the coveted cam opener, which is very common for Cornell wrestlers. And now we see the assassin attempt, but unsuccessful. Jonathan Furness doing a good job of not giving up any backs as the clock ticked down two seconds left. And that's the end of the first period. One of our questions, how many rolls of tape are used on Michael Jordan's leg? I would say at least one and a half, possibly two. That is not including pre app strictly white athletic tape. What the injury is, is unclear. Possibly knee, possibly ankle. Maybe it's his elbow. Maybe it's his other knee, and they're trying to throw everyone off. And Michael Jordan shows short, short work getting out in five seconds from Jonathan Furness. And a nice snap from Michael Jordan. Micah Jordan. You might say Michael Jordan. Micah. Yeah, Micah. And there's that single to leg again, sitting him down. And he said, I know I know the kid's got a free clinic earlier this morning, but I'm going to give one more. I want to give my own free clinic, and it's going to be a takedown one. And that wasn't nice. He definitely knew that he was out of bounds. He just wanted to throw a furnace. <laughs> and Jonathan Furnace trying to get a jump gun on the start. He's just so eager to get out there. And Micah, man, you got to be careful. My mom's right over there. You almost hit her. And Micah did the slide by into the spinning kick. Patented by Donatello, the 
You, you, let, you Ninja Turtle. And there's that single leg from Michael Jordan again. He gets the single leg, he cuts the corner, and then he'll cut across real hard and sit you on your butt using your own energy and movement against you. And although the score is 11-3 in, in favor of Jordan, Flinders has been given constant effort fighting every takedown, and that's something that you can't teach. So kudos to Jonathan Furness for giving up a good fight. But also kudos to Michael Jordan for having one hell of a single leg. And there's that single leg of Michael Jordan. Furnace doing a good job of controlling the opposite hand and keeping that whizzer. But Mike is staying tough. Pressure in. And getting the angle. Now the time clicks down. Five seconds left in the second period. Score is 15-5 in favor of Michael Jordan. And riding time in favor of Jordan at two minutes and five seconds. And Michael Jordan doing the optional start and getting right to work on his feet. And there's that lefty high crotch, turn single leg, picking it up from the feet and going around, getting the opposite hip, and going cradle. And let me tell you, this is a tough spot for Jonathan Furness. Not able to get any real attacks off, constantly defending, single leg to slide by, pushing forward. Furness got to get to his feet, stuck on his knees, Michael Jordan in the front headlock, showing cow catcher. And he might get it. And he got the pin on Jonathan Furness. The cow catcher cement job, whatever you call it, it worked for Micah Jordan. And that's a pin in favor of the Ohio State University. Bringing the total team score as I count on my hands. 14 to three. A cameraman, Charles Tucker, has zoomed in. What's on the back of the Ohio State singlets are, quote unquote, a bunch of stars. And here we see an unprecedented sight here on the wrestling mat in Bartels Arena. Dylan Palacio has returned. So am I just talking to myself right now? Some slight technical difficulties here. Our engineer Eric Hughes is hard at work trying to troubleshoot this problem. And there is the man. Which 
What's your alternative, Eric? Yeah, I got it. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. Thank you for sticking with us. We had some technical difficulties. I needed to charge my phone and accidentally unplugged everything. And here we're back with Dylan Palacio making his return to the mat. An undefeated season so far of 1 0. Number 10, right? Dylan Palacio against Anthony DiCarlo, their first meeting at the 157 pounds. Great class. And a nice Russian tie. Faked single leg. Went high crotch. Snap down. Controlling the attack hand. Control the attack hand. Something Dylan Palacio practices and preaches. And a nice takedown from Dylan Palacio on the edge of the mat. Almost threatened to feed to back against the Carlo. And if you were cut out beforehand, Jonathan Furness did lose of pinfall to Micah Jordan in the third period. Team score is 14-3 in favor of the Ohio State Buckeyes. Palacio, who has been absent for the majority of this season, is looking to make great strides at Nationals this year after placing fourth in Madison Square Garden. Palacio riding tough, fighting hand control, Hanging over using those long arms to his advantage. DiCarlo needs to get hip separation and hand control. Trying to throw in a leg from Palacio. DiCarlo not able to defend it well. Palacio goes for a turn. Doesn't get it back to his feet. Palacio very good on his feet. Loves that Russian tie, controls the attack hand. Philosophy made famous by the great David Dean. Control the attack hand. And there's that post high crotch. Patented by Dylan Palacio as he hops side, hooks the bottom leg. Flawless execution, let's see if he can finish it. He's gonna have to turn in as the Carlo wants to try to grab the other leg and there's the takedown for Palacio. He's got both of the legs. High up on the edge of the mat. See if he can get the, get the turn. He hooks the leg right there as our cameraman, Charles Tucker, follows the action. Not missing a single frame for our award-winning viewers. Riding time at 1.36 in favor of Placio. 20 seconds left in the period. Placio leads 4-1. Most likely going to finish that on top, throwing a leg in, switching sides. A lot of pressure forward right here. We see a little surge of energy from DiCarlo. He's got eight seconds left. Prepare to see a first move off the whistle. Placeo with the left leg taped. Again, possibly could be a decoy. Could be his right leg. Could be his arm. We don't know. <laughs> Three, two, and that's the end of the first period. Palacio with two impressive takedowns and a ride out leads 4-1 over to Carlo and his much anticipated return. Dylan Palacio, the L40 captain, up goes optional start, making the score 4-2. And a dive shot from DiCarlo Placio going to the other side, staying tight with that lock. And the crotch now attacking the ankle and sliding it by and pressuring in. And great technique from Palacio. Palacio has amazing style. His style is he has no style. He goes out there and he gets stuff done. 
and just athletic moves. And another escape from DiCarlo. We'll see if Palacio can dazzle us with another takedown and a tuck under. That was so good that it backfired on him. And a takedown for DiCarlo. And what happened there is Palacio went for the duck under, but got DiCarlo so much and it actually turned into an offensive for DiCarlo. DiCarlo in for another takedown. Palacio brings him over again, attacking the side, hops over to the other side, hops over to the other side. He's playing hopscotch on the back of Anthony. DiCarlo jumps over, kicks his elbow out. He's grabbing both of his angle feet to head to feet right now. He's got to get his other leg free and get pressure in if he wants to get this takedown. 37 seconds left on the clock. And right now, who yells the crowd and the referee agrees. Two takedown in favor of Palacio. And what was nothing short of a dazzling takedown. And DiCarlo trying to kick his leg free. And we have 13 seconds left in the second period. Riding time takes over two minutes and 30 seconds in favor of Palacio. Palacio leads 9-5. And a stall warning at the end of the second period. Now we go into the third. Choice goes to Palacio, and he goes down. Palacio, well, he is good on his feet. Bottom is just as dangerous. Remember, he has pinned people at the national tournament with a Peterson. And now we're back to our feet. Palacio leads 10-5. Coaches of Cornell would like a major. We'll see if Palacio's got it in him. And a nice Russian to snap to inside trip attempt to drag. And a beautiful drag corralling the legs of Anthony DiCarlo. Brought both of his legs together like an aborigine weapon. And DiCarlo in on a shot. Lefty high C. Palacio doing a good job defending. Attacking the far ankle of DiCarlo. Hopping over to the other side. And here we are again in this funky position that is all too familiar in the world of Dylan Palacio. And he gets another takedown splitting the legs of DiCarlo. DiCarlo crawls forward to get through his belly. And Mike Gray and Damian Hansen cut him. And Palacio follows suit. Score is 14-7. And Palacio with a quick single leg and a finish again. And he says, I'm not the only one who can take people down over and over. Nathan Thomas, hello. And they go out of bounds. And Palacio goes to the center. The, the commander-in-chief of the L-40 Army, Dylan Palacio, giving an impressive performance. And DiCarlo with that single leg again. And Palacio... If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Hooks the leg, sits the corner, and gets another takedown. Stretching the body of DiCarlo. Hooking the far leg. Driving across, trying to get those back points. And the, the over-under on whether or not the L40 will be shown during this victory is at minus. 180 for our betters out there. And will we see it? Bill Palacio waves to this crowd. Quite possibly the last time he'll wrestle in this arena. And there it is, L40. And I will try my best to see if we can get a hold of one of the wrestlers here. Let me know which one you want to hear from. Admittedly, I have the largest poll on the Cornell squad over Ohio State. But if you would like to hear from one of them, let me know on my Twitter who you want to hear from, and I'll do my best to get them. As we start our 165 bout, Brandon Womack 
versus Cody Bircher. I hope I'm saying that right. Bircher? If I'm saying it wrong, please let me know. And remember, this is a rematch of the barn burner that was a 7-5 sudden victory win for Womack. And Bircher gets the leg up high, and Womack is squealing around like a, like a cat out of water as he gets up high trying to keep that leg on the inside. Then he goes on the outside. Now he goes high flyer. And he's going to bring it into his own single leg on the edge of the mat. He says, get back here in my own town. Let's show you how we do it down in Mama. And he gets the two no reaction time of Carl Jesselin. And that shot some life into the crowd here in Bartels Hall. Newman Arena, Cornell University, Ithaca. And Bircher seems to have an issue. Blood, headgear, I don't really know. But holy cow, what an exchange that was. Bircher with a single leg brought it up high. Bama, or Brandon Walmack from Alabama, referred to as Bama most commonly on campus. But his leg to the outside, then out, inside, then outside, then inside, then high flyer to a single leg, and then he got the takedown. High flyer, a move made famous by Tommy McCulloch. Again, that high flyer patented by Tom Maholic, who hits it best. Thank you, Tom. And Brandon Walmack is one heck of a rider. Let's see how we can do here. Nice mat return. And that brings some life again into the crowd as the pet band gives a nice little drum roll going off to the side and getting good leverage. Walmack now has got that figure four on the right leg of Bircher. Patented by Mitch Clark, that figure four of Ohio State, coincidentally here in the crowd. Unclear if he's rooting for Cornell or Ohio State as he does live in Ithaca, but that figure four is what got him national title by Tech Fall. Seems Brandon Walmack has tried to give it his own little spin. Controlling the left side, controlling the arms on the left side and the legs on the right side. Brandon Womack riding tough, trying to hop across. Turn those hips of Bircher. Minute 15 left in the first period. And fans are wondering, what is he doing? Riding time at 126 in favor of Walmack as he loads top and a nice forward pressure. Bircher in a sit out position. And he scurries away as he tiptoes in his Jordans away. And they're back on their feet. 30 seconds left. Will they be content with going into the period, second period at 2-1? Or will one of them try to score? You will find out. Bircher taps the head of Bama. Bama goes in for a Russian tie. 10 seconds left. They may just hang out here. And a nice little inside trip and a throw by from... Bama, and that's all we're going to see for action in the first period. Coming up, probably our featured uh, most anticipated match in 174 after this match. Number three, Byron O'Buro versus number one, Bo Jordan. Stay tuned. As we go into the second period, riding time is at 137 in favor of Womack as he goes down and takes down. Birch is going to have to take away at that riding time. He's going to want to stay in this match. Bircher, a nice cross body ride. Got one leg hooked, throwing his body across Walmack's back, attacking the arms. Hence the name, Cross Body. Who would have thought? And a nice vicious cross face from Bircher. That does not look pleasant. Holy cow. Glad I'm not out there. Oh, 
two and he got to his feet, went for the Peterson, didn't get it, and he's broken flat. So high risk, high reward for Brandon Womack. And now riding time is at 47 in favor of Womack with a minute and five left in the period. Brandon Womack flat on his stomach. Gonna have to get to his base, but somehow Bircher is doing a good job pushing that elbow away from Womack. As soon as he builds it up, he pushes it right away. Yeah, it's our cameraman to zoom in. See how he's pushing, he's controlling, pushing that elbow of Walmack away so he can't base up, going across and trying to block his his posts out as, they, as he gets up. And Walmack throws Kamikaze. And I'm trying to make sense of what I'm seeing, but it just looks like a lot of flailing arms and, and hanging. And what's the call? It's gonna be a stalemate. And Bircher looks over at the clock and says, <sighs> Brandon Walmack's got 23 seconds to get out. Oh, and double boots in. Oh, he gets it out. He's going to have to swim here. And holy cow, Mike Gray just jumped 20 feet in the air as he gets so excited. And now they're on his back. There's 12 seconds left. He's going to have to get out if he can. Birch is going to have to hang out. He's squeezing hard with everything in his body. What is going on right now? It's pandemonium here in Newman Arena. Can Brandon Walmack get out? There's one second left. And no! The referee says, no, sir, not today. And Brandon Womack says, what incarnation? And Donnie Vincent would like to have a word. He said, sir, there's a, there's a nice pretty red flag right there if you would like to wave that and challenge. Tom Ryan says, what's all the commotion? I can't believe they gave me a live mic for this. Folks, I'd like to thank you so much for just indulging me in my weirdness. Yeah, we